Hey guys, this is Tina from Plant Alone Farm Life, and uh, today I'm going to be talking a little bit about my Bible notes, Bible journaling, and how it's going. It's kind of a check-in mid-year uh, because we are about halfway through the year, and um, I am on a read the Bible through from cover to cover throughout a uh, one year. So um, this is my journaling Bible that I have. Um, I, it is a King James Journal the Word Bible, and I think it's by Zondervan, Thomas Nelson, sorry, Thomas Nelson. So, um, I have always had a King James Bible, and, um, like, I got one way back in the early 80s. Um, that was my first Bible, was a King James Bible, so I grew up with the King James Bible. And if you haven't grown up with the King James Bible, sometimes it can be overwhelming um, as far as understanding in the wording. So um, stay tuned because after I go through this, I have a little twist in my plan and a little surprise. So um, I will tell you to start off, the Bible tabs are from uh, Mr. Penn. Oop, that one's tucked in there. And I will put a screenshot in here. I think I've done it before. Um, I changed my tabs out because I had gotten some from Amazon and they were pretty and whatnot, but they were not um, very clear in the lighting that we had in church. And so my purpose for using these is not just to find the book, but to find the book quickly, because when our pastor talks, he talks quickly. <laughs> and so when you're flipping from one book to the other, um, sometimes the the paper, it just, it doesn't, it's hard to separate. See, there's like two pages there. So in order to like take notes and flip the pages really quickly, um, it just, it's, this just makes it so much easier. Uh, I will leave a link for this bookmark because it is a, where does it have five? And I think it comes in this bluish purple hue and I think it has a pink tone set as well. I am loving these. Um, it adds more ribbons to my Bible so that I can keep track of uh, multiple sections in uh, like when the pastor is flipping back and forth, it helps me keep track of where I'm at in my daily reading and also my Sunday school as well as my uh, ladies Bible study group. So I kind of have um, certain ones that I use for this, you know, what I would call the stationary or the slow moving ones, which is the um, Sunday school study, the um, reading, daily reading, and then the ladies Bible study, because we kind of like, you know, we're, we're slower moving. Then I have several that we use, that I use for when the pastor is talking about different references. And so I, you know, and he'll flip back and forth. And, and so I generally use one or two for that. So I started this reading plan in January and I will show you, oops, Hold on, let me get it out of my bag. Um, then plan this all out too well here, because that would be right on top of the ball. Um, this is in my uh, faith planner. This is um, it's called Seeking Scripture, and you can join. You can do this at any time, but I will tell you, it is great to be able to um, read and. List, read the Bible, listen to her commentary, and then join in the discussions on uh, the Facebook group. Um, and they only, like, if you want a accountability type uh, group or reading plan, this is it. This will get you from one cover to the other in one year if you stick to the plan and it kind of loosely has a an accountability element to it, which helps me out. Um, simply for the fact that there's, I can go and talk to other people about what we've just read, and um, she kind of sums it up and brings out other elements and things. 
that you might not think of or you're like, am I on the right track? And then, you know, here she pops in with, you know, her notes and commentary. So um, it's been a real blessing to me throughout the year so far and I am still enjoying it. We are midway through the year and it's been great. So without further ado, I'm going to jump in. Um, I put a sticky note and I've got a few loose pages in case I don't have my Bible tote bag and I need to make some notes or just write something down. Um, I'm going to go through pretty quickly. I'm not going to explain everything, but I will point out some things. So um, these are verses that just really suck out to me and, <coughs> oh, excuse me. Uh, I just wanted them to be up there. They're meaningful and so I want them to be up front. This is from the, I'm sorry, this is from the Seeking Scriptures group. And then I put in, because this page was getting very um, wrinkled and it wouldn't stay flat, I put some cardstock here, just light cardstock, something pretty, and then I could still write. And then we have the introduction and the table of contents with the preface. And then I put in some, uh, again, wrinkled. So I put in just a blank um, cardstock and started making notes. So I am one of those that I do not care. If you, if you want to color code your notes, that is fine. I don't. I literally pick a color up and I make my notes and then I draw the lines and color code on that page for reference. I do not have, you know, something, a color for salvation, a color for love, a color for uh, commandments or whatever. Um, there's a lot of different ways to do this and a lot of different ways not to. I will tell you that I think, what is this one? Um, this is, I think this was one of my Statler fine liners and you can see how, how boldly it came through the other side. Um, so I don't recommend those. Um, I will tell you, uh, this is a set of one, two, three, four, five, six, I think. Um, these are Mr. Pen non-bleed fine point ballpoint pens. And so you can see that it's pretty, you know, it's a decent pen and I like these. Um, but I have found that instead of these as my everyday all the time, I love these. These are Mr. Pen. Um, they click out and they're a finer point, I believe. I really love these and I got the, I think there's a pastel set that I got and a darker tone set that I got. So I have what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven 11, or 12, I think 12 colors in that click out pen set. And I love them. Um, I didn't start using them until like, I think Samuel or Chronicles. Um, we'll have to find out, but this I believe is the Mr. Pen ballpoint pen. So no matter what you do in a Bible, you're going to have some bleed through and you're going to have some, uh, so you can see that was, I don't remember what pen that was, but I learned not to do that. Um, see, <laughs> so, um, you're going to have some bleed through or some shadowing, um, in Bible, even journaling Bibles, because they, uh, they just do. They, they're, the paper is not thick enough. So you see, I put a little flip out here. Let me make sure I'm still in frame here. Um, and that, and so it didn't want to take up the entirety of it because I know I'm going to want to come back and take some, you know, more notes. Um, sometimes I'll put stuff on stickies to reference and to uh, go back and study more and make more notes. And then I'll put some. Uh, references like summaries and a reference <clears throat> and I'll put questions um, so sometimes when I'm writing I use the notes from the seeking scriptures 
commentary. I also use some from um, the, like if someone says something in the group and it resonates with me, um, I will put that. Sometimes I just put in like, hey, these do connect. So um, sometimes I will use my Bible knowledge commentary, which I think is pretty darn great. Um, I got it for a really good deal. So I also have some other, I don't have a whole lot of commentaries. I have um, like Bible dictionaries and atlases and things like that. So if you want a Bible resource, like what I have found, um, I can go over those. Just let me know down below. Uh, I have a lot. So I can go through some. Um, so sometimes I will just make general notes. I put in, this is a uh, printable that we got from the group and it really just kind of like made things a little bit easier. This is a map that kind of goes with the 12 tribes. So you can see, it doesn't have to be fancy and beautiful. It just, I wanted to leave more room, but I learned, I've learned make them write smaller. Um, <laughs> and then sometimes, uh, so how could Jacob, Jacob wrestle with God? I've washi taped this close and it's a whole um, thing about when Jacob wrestles with God. And then it's on a flip out to where I put a lot of, I started putting some notes there. So, um, there's some more flip outs and it just depends on what I have available at the time. And as you can see, some pages are, you know, full and others are not so full. And this is going through the Bible one for, for the last six months, I should say. Um, so see, sometimes there's more to write and sometimes not so much. And sometimes they're like super color coded and sometimes they're just, um, you know, kind of just there. So you'll see this. And if you flip the page, it has that around there so that I know that those notes go together and I needed um, more room. Uh, so you'll find out what these notes are here in a bit, but this is the meanings of all of the names of the uh, 12 tribes of Israel. So like um, Gad, the tribe of Gad, these are all of the sons of Gad. And <clears throat> these are the meanings of their names because I figured at some point this is going to come to um, mean obviously something in there. So this is um, a commentary article I think that I printed out from the Seeking Scripture. So and then we go into Exodus and you'll see lines and when I highlight, I have learned I really like my colored pencils, um, and I use and it's it's so easy. Um, it, I use the Sattler color pencils. I have literally had this same set for the last ten years, um, and I don't know why I haven't used it more, but I am using it more. <laughs> so um, I try to put at the beginning of each book of the Bible, like what it. It's Hebrew and what it means. Um, you can see sometimes I will just make that. <clears throat> sometimes um, the plagues and the verse references. Can you see that? So I put the plagues and then the verse and or chapter and verse reference so that it was easier to find. Um, and I can add more notes in there. And then there are some days, see, this is why these pages, um, some days I don't do a whole lot, but I do read and I do listen to it. And um, let me see if I can't find, I don't need to go page by page. This helped me out too, is the structure of the tribes that, because Moses was trying to do it all by himself, so to speak. And so this allowed him to delegate and took a lot off of his shoulders, um, but he still felt that burden. Um, 
so let me see. So this is um, the tabernacle. I made this one myself because I couldn't find anything and I lost it. So I'm going to have to figure out how to like replicate this again um, because I have to find the images and then retype it. I don't know why I lost it because it just kind of helped put things in perspective for me to um, see what these pieces were and how this was laid out, how uh, massive and um, spectacular it was. And I wish, like, I would love to go and see something like that. This is the Garments of the High Priest. Um, this came from Time Warp Wife, and it kind of goes over when they were designing and w when God told them how to design and how to make the garments for the priests, this tells and it summarizes everything and the meanings of it all. So I will, I am, I'm pretty good at tipping in things because I will lose them um, in my book. So you see this whole thing here, this was highlighter and then I highlighted around. And then I have a reference here in the similar color because I just um, grabbed a different pen. Uh, this one, I'm going to have to look it up again. Um, but this one I thought was from, no, this is not from, th this is from um, Seeking Scripture. And it's summarizes and references the types of offerings that they are uh, discussed and told about in Leviticus. And Leviticus, Leviticus, let me tell you, is a bit of a challenging chapter or verse chapter and book. Um, it is one that I look forward to going back and deep diving in um, because there is so much in there. Um, to look at, to learn, to dissect and, and soak in. So you see sometimes they're just not very much and I'm not going page by page. I'm just, <laughs> um, I, this stuck out to me. Trust God, question the world. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So I wanted to make that, um, a big quote there to remind myself to question the world when it kind of makes you feel like you should be doing something a certain way or doing something that you're not quite sure of. Question what the world is uh, urging you to do and trust God and trust God's word. Excuse me. Um, because we all need that reminder. And you'll see under that, oops, see these pages. Um, these are the references and I highlighted that and brought it down. So I'm just showing you different ways. Um, this is referencing and, and encompassing this entire section. This one is the uh, way that they were laid out in the camp. This is the tabernacle. And so you see the tribe of Levi's in the middle. This is from Seeking Scripture as well. She did a really good job of laying this out. And um, so I highlighted, I, we added up, the, you know, 600, 603,550 men of 20 years or older, excluding the Levites. And the Levites were one, counted as one month old males of 22,300. So all of these people out here were counted in this one, and these were just the Levites. Um, and they were camped all around the tabernacle, and um, it just is amazing. And so, why did I do that? Um, oh, because this is the line that they were, like when they packed up and moved, this was the order that everything went in. So you have the first six, tribes and then you have the tent of meeting and Levites and then you've got the last six and I thought that was very um I mean everything God does and and has us do is very methodical and very um purposeful 
and I think that we need to pay more attention to that. Um, and sometimes I will just uh, define, like put the Greek word or the Hebrew word if it's in, and then the definition. So um, if you are not and you, you don't want to, I want this video to encourage you. Um, you're not desecrating the word of God. You are not harming it. You are not um, uh, belittling it or, you know, whatever somebody says to you about writing in your Bible. Um, and I say this because I was punished for writing in my Bible as a kid. Um, and it took me years and years to get over that and get past it. Um, it took a long time. So I want you to be encouraged that this is more about soaking in and studying and understanding and piecing together the information and the stories that are in here for us to learn from. And for me, the best way to do that is to make notes and to um, make connections. Uh, and that's, that's huge for me. So here's another tip in. Oop. And Deuteronomy, which is the second law. So Leviticus is basically, you know, the, the um, laying down all the details of law. And Deuteronomy is kind of a, I want to say more of a reminder. And this is um, like a, a, almost like a rehash, but it's got, you know, obviously different information, different um, uh, perspective, different like, hey, don't you remember this is what we did and what we're supposed to. Um, because everything in the Bible, I believe, comes from, you know, it's, it's a Ten Commandments in different ways, in different details of like, hey, uh, do you remember this commandment? Well, this is part of it and we need to apply it. And it counts for this. It, it count, This counts towards that, you know. And so sometimes I think we're like, oh, well, I didn't commit adultery against my spouse or my partner. But that committing adultery means more than just toward your spouse or partner. It can be towards God. And that is when you honor false gods, when you worship false gods. Um so you have to like really think about how you can apply those Ten Commandments throughout your life in different ways that you didn't think of before um, because they're there and they, they will pop up and get you. They surprise you when you're least expecting it. <laughs> so this one I've not done a whole lot in. Um, I've done some underlining and... So this one is something that Christy over at Seeking Scripture put together, and I love this one. It's a collection of wholehearted verses. We are called to love God wholeheartedly. And this is um, something that was put together, and I did a tip in with it. Um, and I think that that's a really great reference. Um, this, and sometimes, like, I've not had... A daily Bible that has had maps. So I decided I was going to add maps in to, because it just helps you understand and helps you piece things together. There's not too many here. There's obviously some underlining. Um, this one is a quote by Fred Meyer. F.B. Meyer? Fred Meyer? I don't know. Um, and then this is the like judges um, and then how many years, and then the reference in their rule. Um, so that kind of is, you know, just references. And so Judges covers about 300 years. If you didn't know, now you do. Um, these are just notes for here. And I'm going to kind of speed up a little bit. Trying to find some more interesting bits. Um, so 
so you can see on the other sides how um, how much or how little um, there's Ruth and I really oh my goodness I want to deep dive into this so badly I need some time <laughs> um, and here's Sam for Samuel and it just, you know, sometimes, and I'm not discounting, those who do the beautiful layout over the words and just on the side, that is great. Um, and if that is how it gets you motivated, gets you in the word, that is fine. I am not, I'm creative, but I am not that artistic. Um, so that doesn't fit for me and it's not how I learn. Um, so to speak. So, um, so here's a big note on first Samuel 25 for myself. And I just tipped that in figuring I would write something on the back of it eventually. And sometimes, as I said, sometimes you just don't. And I'm going to, can you see, there's that. So maybe next year. Um, and then this is the Kings of Judah and Israel and it shows their reign. And I believe this has have the prophets. No, this doesn't have the prophets on it, but it does tell you this is the Kings of Judah, Kings of Israel. Oh, it does. The prophets are in the boxes. I don't know how I missed that, um, but it kind of gives you perspective. And this is a list that she had done. Um, and then these are things I intend to do when I go back through Kings. She made a good point. She took, um, she did four things and I'm choosing to, I said colors. I wanted to do colors. Um, I want to do, I want to color code all the Kings doing good, all the Kings doing evil, the references to Jeroboam walking in the way and a color for the high places. What happens to them going up or down? <laughs> because if you read Kings, it is, Unreal the amount of times that the high places of others, other gods and idols, and that are put up and torn down. Um, if you really want to learn about, you know, what you know, you need to learn about history to not repeat it. Well, you know, we, we keep doing it, and it's been happening since the beginning of time. So, um, you can see a lot of notes going on there. But I just want to encourage you to um, get in and read. And um, so you see, this is all color pencil here. So I can write my notes and then color over it with color pencil. And it really makes it pop, keeps it color coded. And sometimes they just get a little sparse on notes, but it's more of reading. So there's Chronicles and we had, um, that's a sermon that I went to a church, an old church. So I didn't take everything with me. Um, so I have notes to put in my sermon. Let's see, here's some notes here. And these things keep sticking together. So I want you to sh see, you don't have to go big and bright and fancy. Um, Here's some of here. So I'm going to skip ahead because I can tell you they're all kind of like this. And right now I'm literally in what do we do today um, that hasn't been moved. We went through the, not the 19th. I think we're in the 13th. So we're in 9, 10, 11. I think we're over here. I'll put this because this is my daily reading and I just haven't been moving my marker. So this is how much we have covered in the first part of the year. And it's been great. Um, this is what we still have left to go. And I do want to show you one or two books because back here, I don't, you'll see, I don't have a whole lot because I've been like, sometimes I'll make notes um, based on my <clears throat> uh, Bible studies and that. And sometimes um, I just make my notes in my sermon notes and then I figure I'll come back. So see, there's that. Um, I did make a, like, because the gospels reference each other 
before. They, they kind of have similar stories. I try, I'm trying to make these notes to reference. So if I want to compare what, say, Jesus walks on the sea in Mark, Luke, and John, I know where to go now when I'm studying so I can compare them and see what their perspective was. Um, so what are we in? We're in Luke. Okay. So we've gone over in Luke, we've gone over this section quite a bit. Um, and this is just the crucifixion and stuff. And the God commands his, or Jesus commands his spirit to God. Um, and so I kind of, you see the color coding that I have going on here. Um, and it's just, I'm just giving you ideas. Um, so you can see here's another place in John. And this color I really don't like as far as note taking. And that is, um, oop, let me see, this one. <laughs> it's, it's pretty, but it doesn't work that well on this paper. It might work on white paper better. Um, but I will tell you, there is also this one and this one that work much better. So, um, oop, I'm going to get that in a minute. But, um, so sometimes you might have to, you know, go over what you've written because the pen that you chose was not the best. So I will probably go back over that. Um, here's some others about the raising of Lazarus. This was, uh, Sunday school notes that we, um, went over the raising of Lazarus and uh, where is it? I think I've done, I thought I did some, in, maybe it's Colossians instead of Corinthians, probably. Okay, so I'm gonna go over Ephesians because I've done literally, I went through Ephesians completely and we did this during Sunday school and then I transferred my notes, so. Um, this is how I started out. And do I want to write this big? No, I've learned. Don't write that big. <laughs> if I write that big, even if I do write that big, move it over. If I, And this I just wrote as far as the lines because I prefer lines. And this is just an old um, notebook. I don't know if I have it in here. I probably don't. Oh, yes, I do. Okay, so like this is one of these... Um, Penning gear, this is from Walmart, I think. I do have one from Hobby Lobby or Michaels that I use, and I just take the pages and um, I just tear them out, and that way they fit. It's something that fits into this Bible, and it just works out good for me. So this is my Ephesians, and you can see some color coding and how I made my notes, and then I highlighted and drew my line to explain where I was going with it. And then I added, like, here's a box, and it references these, and I, 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 I added more. And then I had, you know, I wanted to define this um, because it was, I think, in a commentary that I wrote that out when I found it, and I was like, okay, I need to define redowns. Um, this one, chapter two, I went, <laughs> you can, I went, I went deep. I was um, kind of trying to simplify each. Let me see if I can do this. This will help you see it. Um, I went um, chapter by chapter, or not chapter, verse by verse, um, 11, 12, 13, 17. I was trying to um, kind of summarize what was happening so that I could understand. Um, and then, of course, I went, over here and I've, you know, I went back and reread it and really dove in and I've got lots and lots of notes. So this is what can happen if you dive in. Um, I don't particularly have any notes for chapter three, but I know if I go through it again, um, I will probably fill this up going through this and this over here. Um, and then I've got this and I need to add more notes here. So. This is, um, this was the armor of God, the whole armor of God. And I really went in depth with this and I honestly can't remember at the moment. Um, I think this was 
from a Sunday school note that I had taken. Um, I think between that and maybe a commentary, that that is where I got that from. And then we have Colossians where I started, I summarized this whole section and instead of highlighting the entire section because I figured I would come back through and um, make more notes and stuff, I just highlighted down here to kind of offset and like go, hey, this is over here. And because it covers like this does 24 to 28. So I kind of split my notes up a little bit um, to be based on the side with those verses. And then you'll see just the different ways. And it just depends on how I feel like making my notes, whether I want to outline them or just highlight them and then make a line. Um, I don't think I really have too much going on back here yet. Um, but that that does, I mean, it's quite a bit. So you can see if that one needs to be stuck in there. This is why it needs to be transferred because, um, so you can see that it's getting a little chunky. Um, but here in is the kicker. I have decided that um, I am going to be uh, moving versions. <laughs> so for my the entirety of my life, I have had King James as my um, sole like reading, studying, and I have other versions to reference, but I've always used the King James. I am moving over to an ESV. And I picked this up at a local, I found, I have a local Bible bookstore and I'm so excited. I love it. I could have spent a lot more time there. Um, but this is an ESV single column journaling Bible by Crossway. And it's very simple. It's got like a leatherette cover and um, it just, it's bigger. So let me show you. It is, let me see if I can't get it. Okay, so I don't know if you can tell, it is a little bit wider, okay, about a thumb tip, and then it's obviously that much bigger. So, um, let me see if I can't show you something without a lot of distraction. You'll see the print is a little bit bigger. That was one of the main things. This is like, I think, a seven, and this is a nine and a half. Um, font and that is a huge factor because it's not because I'm getting old I am just telling you my eyes have always been bad <laughs> I've always had bad eyes um, so it really my eyes get tired and that and I wanted to try um, I wanted an uh, ASB Bible um, an American Standard Version but they didn't have one in a journaling Bible so I thought I am going to um, just start using this. Um, this is the preface. This is still way over on the left side of the spectrum. Um, so you can see how much more room um, there is to make notes. And the print being a little bit bigger helps a lot. Um, in fact, let me see. Oop give you a size difference because um, you can get these on Amazon. I got this at Ollie's, believe it or not. So this King James is six by, let me see, the pages are six by like seven, almost eight. Okay, almost eight. It's not quite eight because it's like right, the line right before eight. So you see it's almost at the eight. So it's six by eight which is not a bad size, but this one is nine and a quarter by six and a half. And it may not seem like a lot, but in the long run, as far as space for notes and um, just readability and that, and this one has footnotes. And this Bible, I think, I think in the back, oop, kind of push, push that page back out of there. 
I don't think it has anything really. Yeah, I don't. It literally comes to the end of Revelations. It has nothing. Um, so you can see, and I'm like, I haven't done a lot in, I haven't done a lot of anything um, <clears throat> in Psalms in that Bible because I want to take my time and go through each one. Um, and we are going through between two and like five a day. And I can't keep up with that as far as I, I'm reading them. Absolutely. But look at all this space where I can make the notes and really uh, dissect into here um, what I want to learn and glean from this information. And so it, you know, even like it has this, but then it has this because of the way the, this is a verse one and this is a verse one. Okay, but this is the difference in, I think, the size. Um, it has a lot to do with it. But I like that it has some of these footnotes. I've not had a Bible that had footnotes. It doesn't have to have extensive footnotes because I will be making my own. But in the back, um, okay, so we have the weights and measures. And I don't think this one has the weights and measures at all. Nope, that one, the King James one that I had, does not have anything but the books of the Bible. This has a weight and measures, which is really good to reference. Um, and then it has a through the Bible in a year reading plan, which is different than what I'm doing now. And so if I want to at some point in time, I can go through this and follow this one. Um, in fact, I might because this one I'm doing from cover to cover and I want to read the Bible every year from, you know, the whole Bible. So um, it might look a little different next year because I might do something like this. Uh, and this goes through each month and then, yeah, through each month. And so by the time you've got to here, you've read the entirety and you're you, you're reading a psalm yeah you're reading one psalm every day or part of the psalms because you've got like this is broken up some of these are broken up because they are so big um 119 is ginormous it's got 176 verses so in itself so you're reading a psalm every day. You're reading from the Old Testament. You're reading from the New Testament. And um, I really like that. It's kind of neat. Would I like maps? Yeah, I would. But can I add them? Yes. And I can make them bigger um, in that. So will I be adding tabs probably at some point? I'm not sure when. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be making them or if I'm going to just buy a set because of time constraints because I am planning on moving, um, I'm gonna be migrating these notes into here and keeping this as my regular Bible. I like the way the ESV reads. Um, it's still far left, but it is a lot easier for readability. So um, I hope that this has uh, encouraged you and shown you, you know, you, you don't have to do like all the fancy stuff because I didn't start for a long time because I felt like I am not artistic. I'm crafty and, and creative, but I am not that artistic. <laughs> you don't have to be make it work for you. I use stickers. I use some quotes. I um, just do sometimes, you know, a little doodle. I haven't really doodled. I use stencils. Guys, I use stencils. <laughs> I've used stencils in my Bible. So do what works for you. Dive in and really immerse yourself because it just, once you get going, it might seem daunting at first, but once you get going, it is amazing and it propels itself. Um, you know, it's almost like it, you just kind of get this momentum going and you just want to keep going. So if you make it a priority and that, um, you're going to get there. So I hope this was encouraging and inspiring. And if you want to see uh, some of my Bible study resources, um, I will um, consider that. Just 
post down below if you want to see uh, something in particular about Bible studying, Bible journaling, you know, whatever, let me know down below. I'm fairly open to content. Um, I'm not really, you know, rigid in that respect. So I will do the best that I can. I will answer questions to the best of my ability. Um, so go and um, immerse yourself in God's word and glean everything that you can. Um, at a pace that you can handle. Uh, just because I'm doing it here in the Bible doesn't mean that you have to as well. So um, as long as you are in there, you don't have to cover the entire Bible in a year. But as long as you stay in it, you are good. Um, I hope this uh, encourages you. And I will see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.